Hey and welcome back to the third and final part of this tutorial series. In this part we're going to work on the uh, the compositing and also I maybe add a bit of focal blur. You want to render that off now and then switch over to the node editor and choose use nodes and backdrop and we can just place these nodes where we need them to be. This node here you don't need to worry about if you followed along in the previous tutorial, it's the vignette tutorial and you'll already have one of those. If not you don't need to worry about it unless you want one then I suggest go back and yeah probably watch that tutorial okay so let's just line these up now so they're not in the way like so and if we zoom in I'm just going to show you the there's quite a bit of noise in the top corner here it's called fireflies or artifacts or whatever you want to call them so we just need to add one node and it'll get rid of them for us so if we press shift A and go down to filter then we want to use the despeckle node and plug this in. We can see right off the bat it does a great job for us. We only need to do a little bit of tweaking um, yeah, and it'll be perfect. <laughs> so let's just move this back over. We can see it's not just in that area. We do, it does happen in the glass as well. Uh, well, a lot more in the glass. So we need to refine this while looking at this glass as well. So let's just reduce the threshold to around 0.2 is a good value. And we want to increase this to around 6 or 7, maybe 8. So as you see, the more we increase this, it does affect the noise in the glass as well. So you need to be careful. I reckon that's fine for now. A threshold of 0.2 and a neighbourhood of 0.7 should, should work for this. So what we can do as well, if you're still finding that your image is too noisy, and you've increased the amount of samples you also want maybe want to increase the transparency and the bounces maybe the glossy transmission just increase some of these and you'll get a better uh, much better results if you still find it's far too noisy then what you'll need to do is is deselect the reflective caustics and refractive caustics um, which is here just uncheck this one and the one underneath it it will give you a less accurate image, um, it won't look perfect, but again it will be a lot less noisy, so you know, I guess it's down to your preference which you'd prefer. So render it once if it's still looking far too noisy, uncheck them, see if you get a better result. Okay, so let's carry on with the, um, the compositing, and we're going to shift A, add in a hue saturation value, plug that in. I'm going to just drag this down so it's desaturated. Shift A, I'm going to add in a colour, then mix, I can plug this in, and then what we want to do is take the feed from uh, the despeckle, since we always want to use this feed now, since it's a clean version of the image, plug that into the bottom part, in fact let's switch these round, so we can see the black and white image. Then what we want to do is change this blend mode from mix to uh, soft light. So it adds in a lot of contrast there to the image. We just want to knock this back a bit and as you see, if we just set this to zero, this is what it looks like before we add the uh, contrast. The more we increase this, the more contrasted it looks. I think it helps um, bring focus to the middle. You don't have to do this compositing part, it's all up to you. Uh, what kind of node setups you want to use but for this image I'm just going to add a bit of contrast it's also shift A and we're going to add um, a colour balance if I can find it <laughs> a colour balance and this will give us the overall look of the scene so let's just move these two over as well Uh, if you've not used a colour balance before, it's pretty fun. Uh, the only values we want to tweak is the lift and the gain. So we're just going to do the gain first. We're going to drag this maybe up into the blues. And this one here, we want to drag it down into the reds. Maybe a bit more orange. Also, if you tweak these contrast values here, the black and whites, uh, you need to move it very slowly or not a lot. To 
be careful when moving these values. Little movements will make change the uh, the image dramatically. So be careful how much you move it. Um, we can also add in a glare node, a shift filter glare. I'm going to add that last since it adds a lot of. Um, it takes longer to composite. So just press Shift A, add an RGB curves, make a very small S curve here, play with the values. Again, if you've followed along in the previous tutorial, you can add your vignette now, or if not, uh, I've put a link up in the annotation up at the top. So I just want to change this now to the 3D view and we're going to add some uh, focal blur. So let's just shift A. In fact, let's select this bottle first and then hit spacebar and type in snap. So we can snap cursor to selected, which is down here. So now when we press shift A and add in, uh, well we want to add in an empty. It'll be at the bottle. We can use any one of these. I'm just going to use a plain axis for now. And just drag it forward a bit so it's just right at the front of the bottle. Let's just move this over here a little bit. So it's in between here so we can see how close it is. And this is going to act as the uh, where the focal blur is going to be. Anything beyond it or closer than the object is going to be blurred. Uh, where that empty is, that's where the po point of focus is going to be. So I'm just going to scale this up so you can see it clearly. Um, and what we need to do is select the camera and then come over here to the camera tab and we can go down to limits. You don't need to do that, it's just so we can see where it is. Um, scroll down and we're going to go to depth of field. So the first thing we do is the focus point. Um, you can actually just select it here from the list of them or you can select this object picker and then select the empty and we can see it's added like a, um, a cross, a yellow cross right where the empty is to show us that's where the focal blur is going to be so let's just, if I delete that, you'll see it disappears if we select this again and there you go so We've got that set. Let's just change the aperture type to f-stop. Now, the lower that we increase, uh, we, the lower we have this number, the more blurry it's going to be. So again, it depends on how far away your camera is from the object that you're trying to focus on. Depends on how much, uh, how low you set this number. I'm going to put 0 0.002, and this is going to be far too much for this example. But if you was a lot closer to the um, the object, then that should be fine. I'm also going to reduce the amount of samples so it doesn't take too long. So say around 50 should be fine. Press render. Yeah, I can see straight away. Look, see how blurry that is, and that's the wine glass. Um, so around here should be quite visible. So let's just go back to the aperture and change it to 0.2 rather than 0 0.02. And we can see that's much better. The background is blurry, but the um, the table, well even the edges of the table is quite blurry but the, the middle of it is fine that's exactly what I want just wait for this to render and there you go, so I'm probably going to go back and add some lights behind the uh, the wine so it shines up a little bit better also add a glare node, and maybe add a few more nodes the composite is all down to your preference and what, what sort of node setups you want to use. Um, so yeah, go ahead and finish this off and maybe send us a link in the description when you've, you've completed it. Show, us, show me what sort of uh, results you've got. So hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like and also subscribe for more tutorials in the future.